This is a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell in Washington. In just moments, President Biden will mark one year since one of the deadliest school shootings in American history, a massacre at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas. It was May 24th, 2022, that a gunman killed 19 children, fourth graders, and two teachers in two adjoining classrooms. The botched police response was heavily criticized after nearly 400 law enforcement officers rushed to the scene, but then they waited outside the classrooms for 77 minutes instead of confronting the gunman. The president is expected to mark today with a call on Republicans in Congress to help end the epidemic of gun violence in America. We should note that mass shootings in the U.S. are on a record pace this year. There have been 241 mass shootings in the United States, and today is just the 144th day of 2023. want to bring in Ed O'Keefe, who is at the White House today. And Ed, what are we expected to hear from the president shortly? Nora, uh, aides let it be known in the last few days that he would be coming out to speak with the First Lady. It was a year ago tonight that they addressed this shooting. He's eager to do so again. Let's watch. Thank you, Ed. We pause now for the President of the United States and First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden. There are candles for each of the young fourth graders who were killed one year ago today, and they are pausing to pay their condolences before they make these remarks. Ed O'Keefe is still with us, Ed. Yeah, they, I remember, Nora, they did a similar candle display when he marked, uh, I believe it was about 500,000 American deaths from COVID. So this is a, a similar display here, uh, part of an ongoing series of commemorations he's made. Before I begin, before I'm beginning, but uh, I realize this is a really tough day for all the families. Remembering is important, but it's also painful. One year ago today, Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, turned into another killing field in America. A few days later, Jill and I traveled there and stood before those 21 crosses outside the school. On each cross, a name, like in these candles behind us, 19 children, 9, 10, 11 years old, and two devoted educators, and 17 more injured. We spent hours with the grieving families who were broken and never, ever will quite be the same. To the families of the children and the educators who we know <clears throat> that one year later is still so raw for you, a year of missed birthdays and holidays, school plays, soccer games, just that smile, a year of everyday joys gone forever. The bend of his smile, the perfect pitch of her laugh. At a vigil a few months later, one of the moms said, when I lay in bed and turn to my side, envisioning her staring back at me, I want so badly to be part of alternative reality that just doesn't exist. This is my reality, because my 10-year-old daughter was murdered in her fourth grade classroom. <clears throat> Standing there in Uvalde, Jill and I couldn't help but think that too many schools, too many everyday places have become killing fields in communities all across every part of America. And in each place, we hear the same message. Do something. For God's sake, please do something. We did something afterwards, but not nearly enough. We still need to ban, in my view, AR-15 firearms and assault weapons once again. You know, they've been used time and again in mass killings of innocent children and people. We need to ban high-capacity magazines, the ability to shoot 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 bullets without reloading. 
because today guns remain the number one killer, the number one killer of children in America, guns. And over the last year since Uvalde, our country has experienced a staggering 650 mass shootings. And well over, it's hard to say, well over 40,000 deaths due to gun violence. We can't end this epidemic until Congress has some common sense gun safety laws to keep weapons of war off our streets and out of the hands of dangerous people. Until states do the same thing. How many more parents will live their worst nightmare before we stand up to the gun lobby? establish universal background checks, establish a national red flag laws, require safe storage of firearms, and end immunity from liability for gun manufacturers, the only, the only major corporate entity that doesn't have this immune to liability. Even a majority of responsible gun owners support these common sense actions to save lives and keep our community safe. So it's time to act. It's time to act. It's time to make our voices heard, not as Democrats or as Republicans, but as friends, as neighbors, as parents, as fellow Americans. And I'm being deadly earnest when I say that. You know, I know for a long time it's been hard to make progress, but there will come a point where our voices are so loud, our determination so clear that we can no longer be stopped. We will act. You know, a year ago, after visiting the school, that same day, we attended Mass at Sacred Heart Catholic Church. In the pews, families and friends held each other tightly. As the Archbishop spoke, he asked the children in attendance to come up on the altar and sit with him as he spoke on the altar. And there wasn't enough room for everybody to go up on the altar, so a mom and her young son sat next to us. They had us in the first pew, and they sat next to us. As we left the church, a grandmother who had just lost her granddaughter came up to us and quietly passed us a note, a handwritten letter. And here's what it read. Erase the invisible line that is dividing our nation. Come up with a solution and fix what's broken and make the changes that are necessary to prevent this from ever happening again. My fellow Americans, you know, you can by, you almost feel the pain. For we've lost, we've lost children. We have to do this to save our children. For the nation we love, to erase that invisible line. Until I stand here today, as earlier this morning we were talking about planning a memorial service this weekend, celebrating the anniversary of the death of our son, Bo. Well, guess what? Well, everyone's pain is different. We, like many of you, have some understanding what it's like to lose a child on more than one occasion. For those who have lost a loved one in Uvalde, to the moms, the dads, the brothers, the sisters, the grandmoms, the grandpops, this is what I know. One, they'll never be gone from your heart. They'll always be part of you. And I know this as well. As unbelievable as it sounds, I promise you, a day will come when you pass that ice cream store, you pass that park, you pass that thing that brings back the memory of your son or daughter. And it's going to bring a smile to your lips when you think of them before it brings a tear to your eye. That's when you know you're going to make it. And our prayer for you, from the bottom of our heart, is that they will come sooner than later. Sooner than later. But God willing, it will come. As I said, that's when you know you're going to make it. God bless those 21 blessed souls lost in this day in Uvalde. And may God bless their families. We're thinking of you. Any update on the debt talks, Mr. President, please? 
There you have it, the President and the First Lady of the United States there in the White House delivering remarks um, to commemorate and note one year since the Uvalde shooting, uh, which killed 19 students and two teachers. The president saying, we cannot end this epidemic of gun violence until Congress and states act. He also said, how many more parents will have to live their worst nightmare because we can't stand up? to the gun lobby. I want to bring in Lilia Luciano, has, who has been covering this story for the past year. She joins us now from Uvalde's town center. And Lilia, I know you've been speaking with the families. They've been demanding changes in gun laws. What can you tell us? Nora, that moment that the president just described, that moment where families pass by, the moments that they that remind them of their children is, is far in the future. First of all, because they have to drive by in the small town through that civic center where they were told their kids did not make it, through the murals, through this memorial. They also have to see their neighbors. And what has happened in this community that I have to tell you was quite shocking is that it didn't necessarily come together. This community has been divided, broken through those very lines having to do with this precise debate. I heard from a 10-year-old little girl who not only survived the shooting but has constant flashbacks that she also uh, lost her brother who was 10 years old. She says, I keep hearing the gunshots. I don't understand what people don't understand. She kept telling me, I just want people to know what it's like to have experienced that and also lost my brother. And that little girl tried to protest in the school and she told me I wasn't allowed. That little girl, parents like Brett Cross, uh, parents like Cynthia Herrera, parents tell me, look, I get messages from my very community saying you are dividing us because you're advocating out there. They're saying, please move on. They get hurtful messages from people within their very community precisely because this gun debate just can't seem to find consensus, not here in Texas, not across the country. But that's not all they need. That's not all that they're asking for. What they need is accountability. They are yet to receive a report of a criminal investigation that the Texas Rangers have been doing for the last year. They still have no idea what happened at Robb Elementary, how their children died. All they have is bits and pieces from leaks here and there, and all they can do is either protest or suffer in pain. Oh, Lilia, just not only dealing with the grief, but also the frustration of not having answers, as you point out. We should note, too, that there was a slight movement on a bill in Texas that would have raised the age of a purchase of an AR-15-style rifle to 21 years of age from 18, but it missed a key deadline. It never got a vote in the full Texas House, um, and that has been frustrating for many people as well as this was a teenage gunman who carried out this massacre at Robb Elementary. Lilia, thank you as always uh, for your empathy and your reporting and, and speaking with the families there for this past year and, and sharing it with us here. Thank you. I do want to bring in our senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe here in Washington at the White House. And Ed, the president saying it is time to act. It is time to make our voices heard, in his words, not as Democrats or Republicans, but as friends, neighbors, and parents. But there's absolutely no movement in Congress on this issue, correct? That's right. Uh, despite the bipartisan legislation passed last year that made the most significant changes at the federal level in about 30 years. There has been no other movement otherwise to expand universal background checks, uh, address the immunity that gun manufacturers enjoy, or, as the president once again said today, push for a new federal assault weapons ban. Notably, in a poll just last month, CBS News found that about 62 percent of Americans support a nationwide ban on the AR-15 semi-automatic weapon, similar to the one used in Uvalde. We've seen 10 states across the country, just 10, ban them. Washington state was the most recent just last month as well. Uh, but several others, of course, uh, in the course of the last year have actually expanded or loosened gun rights in response to the public outcry in those states. Texas, of course, has been a ground zero for this debate for several years, uh, others as well. The other frustrating thing for gun control advocates or those who would like to restrict gun rights is the fact that several states were pushing in the past year to target the immunity that those gun manufacturers 
manufacturers enjoy, or to at least be able to more closely target those that are buying firearms. The gun lobby uh, and other groups that support them push back on that and caused that debate to end. So while the president's calling for federal action, there won't be any anytime soon. In fact, there have been some here in town in the last few days, Nora, who said if he was serious about this, he would use the ongoing debt talks and the conversations with the House Speaker to raise the issue and find a way to work on this. That's not expected to happen. Nora. Ed O'Keefe at the White House for us. Ed, thank you so much. And also to Lilia Luciano.